everybody, it's Carolyn from Homesteading Family and today I'm going to show you how simple it is to make a lacto-fermented sauerkraut. Now this is the old-fashioned sauerkraut, but instead of doing it in the giant crocks for long-term storage like they used to do, we're going to go ahead and just do a more manageable amount, which is just going to be about a quart jar. And this is so easy, it's so simple, and I know as a preservation or a starting um, fermenting, it can be really intimidating and overwhelming because we've heard so much about the danger of improper food preservation or improper food handling, but fermentation is extremely safe. Um, there's very little that can go wrong because if it goes wrong, it molds and you know about it or it smells so bad that nobody could get you to eat it even if they tried. So you can feel really safe and really comfortable starting with lacto-fermenting. It's very simple. So all you need is whatever vegetable you're going to ferment and again today to make sauerkraut we're going to use a cabbage and you need salt. Now some people like to use whey so that they can decrease the amount of salt and I'll show you how to do that a different time. But today we're just going to use plain old salt and a nice medium size head of cabbage. Now this cabbage was just out of the garden. It's a nice dense head and that's what you're looking for. You don't want it to be soft and mushy. And just pick one out that you would call a medium size head of cabbage. That's fairly subjective, I understand, and that's how those old recipes were, so that's okay. You just pick one out that you think is medium size. And we're going to have two tablespoons of salt per medium size head of cabbage. Now, all we're gonna do, oh, I can't forget. First, we wanna look at the outside. If there's any leaves that don't look great on the outside, let's go ahead and peel them right off put them out to the chickens or any other animals, they'll love it. And then we wanna go ahead and take off one leaf that looks like it's in really good shape and try to keep it as whole as possible. And this is gonna be for the top of our jar to go ahead and keep the sauerkraut underneath the liquid. And just set that aside. Now we're going to shred the cabbage. And the easiest way I find to do that is to go ahead and just cut it right off its core. And any nice green parts at the top of that core you'll want to go ahead and pull out too. And that thick core you really want to go ahead and either save that for um, making stock or um, whatever other use you use it or just go ahead and get it to the animals or the compost. Okay, and then to shred it, all you're doing is looking to cut it very, very thinly. Just like that. And it really doesn't take long. You don't need to pull out the food processor for this. It's just so simple. It's a very simple process. Okay, now that we have all of that cabbage shredded up, we're gonna go ahead and just pour, sprinkle over, all of the salt that we have. Now this salt is gonna do a few different things. Right here at the beginning, it's gonna start pulling the juices out of the cabbage. And while the cabbage seems fairly dry like this, um, it is actually a large percentage liquid inside of it. It's got a lot of water in there. And so we're gonna go ahead and let that salt get to work. Now in the fermentation process though, the salt does something else. It, go, it stops the um, breeding of any bad bacteria and um, keeps your cabbage good and keeps your sauerkraut good while giving a chance for the good lactobacillus bacteria to go ahead and form. And that's why we use the term lacto-fermenting, not because we add whey or any lactose product, but because we're allowing the lactobacillus bacteria to form, and that's what is creating that lacto-ferment and keeping your food good for a long period of time and changing it into its fermented form. Now we're gonna go ahead and let this sit with the salt on it for about 10 minutes to let it start getting nice and, um, and wet and starting to pull out all that liquid. Now we're gonna go ahead and let this sit for about 10 minutes and I'll be back. All right, now this has been sitting for about 10 minutes, and if you can see, we're actually already starting to get some liquid forming at the bottom, 
and that's a great start so you don't have to pound so much. Now, the next step that we have is the pounding step. We want to do this because we want to pull as much liquid out of this cabbage as we can right now at this step. Now, there's a few reasons for that, but the main one is that the, the liquid is going to come out of this cabbage because of the salt. It's going to pull, the salt is going to pull that liquid out. And if you have added liquid over the top and then stuck that in a, a container like a jar, um, you're going to go ahead and pull that liquid out of that cabbage in addition to the liquid that you've added and you're going to end up with large amounts of liquid coming out of your jar which is going to give you an imbalanced ratio of liquid to salt and you're going to have a lot greater chance of your ferment going bad. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pound this cabbage to make sure we can get as much of that liquid out as possible so that we don't have to add any additional liquid. Now, pounding it is really what it sounds like. You are literally just taking something and beating on the cabbage. You're gonna kind of bruise it up and that liquid's gonna really start coming out. Now, there are actual sauerkraut pounders if you want to buy something. Um, and they're just kind of like a stick, <laughs> a big stick that you take and you just pound on it. I find that something like a broad wooden spoon works great. If you have a wooden uh, meat hammer, you could go ahead and use the head of that just fine, straight down like this, and you literally just go ahead and pound and pound and pound and what you're going to notice while you're doing this is it's really going to start breaking down we're going to pound for about 10 minutes i'm not going to keep you here the whole time i pound so we'll see you back here in a few minutes all right we've been pounding for about 10 minutes now and you can see how much this cabbage has broken down there's way less volume in here than there was to begin with and um you know it's broken down now to about a third um, the amount of volume and it's quite juicy there's quite a bit of liquid at the bottom that has come out of the cabbage now if you're noticing that yours still looks really dry and there's no juice you may want to take a break for half an hour and then come back and pound again for another five to ten minutes uh, because you really want that juice to be coming out before you pack it into your quart jar and our next step, step is to go ahead and to pack it tightly into a very clean quart jar um, clean freshly washed is the best way to go don't go overboard though and sanitize it don't pull out the bleach because we want something that the bacteria can live in and if there are any traces of bleach you're really going to throw your ferment off so don't go crazy with the sanitation just get it nice and clean and that's good enough now this is really simple make sure you have very clean hands um, you know, trying to pack something like this into a quart jar without using your hands is actually very difficult and not very efficient. So just make sure you have really nice clean hands and then you can go ahead and start packing it right in. And you need to be able to get it in there fairly tightly. And as you go, you're going to want to go ahead and take your tamper and tamp it down in there, pound it in there, because you want that juice to be able to fill up and you want to get as much of this in there as you can so get out any air bubbles that could be in there by going ahead and pressing down that sauerkraut into the jar and go ahead and keep tamping it down a little bit and you can see we've done a pretty good job on the amount that medium-sized cabbage head that I guessed is going to fill up this quart jar pretty nicely and we'll wrap it up here and we have uh, quite a bit of liquid left in the bottom of the jar which is great we're gonna pour that in but before we do I want to go ahead and take this cabbage leaf that I have and we're gonna pull off to just the the soft flexible part and I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that over the top of the cabbage here of the sauerkraut to go ahead and help weigh that down and keep all of this under the liquid because we don't want any of it above the liquid if it is it will mold 
Um, so this is a great way to do this. It's just with a little more cabbage. I use this, do this for all of my home ferments. Just go ahead and tuck either a kale or cabbage leaf or whatever I have on hand right over the top. Okay, and that liquid, can you see that liquid is actually bubbling right up over the top of that? But I do want to top off the jar with any remaining liquid. So I'm going to try not to get any of these little bits of cabbage in there. And just go ahead and top that off. Now you want to leave about an inch at the top of your jar um, to have a little bit of room because like I said, it will pull a little bit and you'll end up with some spillage if you're not careful. Okay, so now you are ready to start the fermenting. You want to go ahead and get a lid on this. Now you have several different options. I love these things. They're new. They certainly aren't old fashioned and you certainly don't need them, but they are like a little airlock to help you be more successful in your fermenting. So this is just going to give you one more layer of protection from any mold happening in your ferment. So you just take one of those, you can get those on Amazon or anywhere. This one is called a Fermalid. <clears throat> And you just use your canning ring and go ahead and lock it down. And that has just enough of an opening that it'll allow the off-gassing. If you don't have that and don't want to buy one, that is fine. People have survived for a long time without rubber fermalids on their food um, and while fermenting. So you can just take a regular lid. I love these storage lids because they aren't airtight. And so you can put this on and you can tighten it down pretty good and know that um, your ferment can still breathe um, and so you're not going to end up with uh, bulging or exploding or any breaking of seals or anything like that. Now that you have it covered loosely, if you use a two-part ring, I should say, with a regular canning lid, you'll want to put that on loosely so that it can breathe and off-gas as it does. Um, it will, and you'll, um, you'll end up breaking something if you don't give it a chance to do that and a way to off-gas. So we're going to leave this out on the counter for about three days. If you're in a really warm kitchen, your kitchen heats up a lot, then by two days you're probably done. And you'll notice that this will start changing a little bit. You'll get some bubbles coming up in it. Uh, the smell will change. It'll get more sour and a little more acidic and um, you can start tasting it and see if it's at a taste where you like it. Once that is done, you're going to want to put this in cold storage and that can either mean a refrigerator or if you are lucky enough to have a cool cellar, cool root cellar, you can go ahead and put it down there for long-term storage and boy this is such good food. Now old timers say that sauerkraut is not really good until about the six month mark. But for us, at two, after about the two to three day mark, it's great to start eating. So go ahead and eat it then and keep eating it and know that it will last in your refrigerator or in your cold storage for a really long time, at least until the next garden season. Guys, enjoy. This is so healthy. Do this right now for your family. It's going to help you through your cold season, your flu season, keep you healthy, keep your stomach and your digestive system working well, and you guys will be so thankful to have some good, easy food in the refrigerator. Take care, guys. Goodbye. For more videos like these, sign up at www.homesteadingfamily.com. Also, follow along on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube.